Welcome back. The Financial Choice Act aims to repeal provisions of the Dodd-Frank Reform Act put in place after the Great Recession. Proponents of the bill say it will loosen regulation on community banks, while opponents say the measure rolls back needed consumer protections and regulations on big banks. So how will it affect customers and the industry in general? Joining me tonight, Peter Walney, President of North Carolina Bankers Association, and Christopher Kukla, Executive Vice President of the Center for Responsible Lending. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Thanks for coming back. Good to see you again. Uh, not an easy topic, and we did talk to the congressman just before. Uh, but just give us your view on this this Choice Act, first of all. This is a, taking a sledgehammer to the to the laws and regulations that we passed post financial crisis, uh, and it wipes out consumer protections in lots of areas. It's not just about small and medium banks. It would wipe out the ability of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau to regulate payday lending, for instance, which is illegal in North Carolina and has been for for ten years. Uh, it would wipe out. Uh, regulations uh, like the arbitration rule, which would keep, which keeps consumers from being able to go to court, uh, it wipes out the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau almost altogether. So this is a much broader thing than just taking aim at regulations that affect small and medium-sized banks. And to us, that's a real concern. It's as if we haven't learned anything in the aftermath of the financial crisis. Peter, what's your take on it? Well. The cost of regulation has fallen disproportionately on community banks, and so Dodd-Frank was 2,300 pages of legislation that was passed in a hurry, in a crisis. Uh, even one of its um, uh, namesakes, Barney Frank, has said that it, it could use some work, it needs to be fixed. And so uh, with the 390 regulations that resulted, um, small banks had to comply with those just like large banks did, but they didn't have the resources, and they still don't today. And so we're seeing... Uh, widespread consolidation in the banking industry and and while that's really nothing new it, it has accelerated and we're losing banks uh, to consolidation in North Carolina we're, we're down 12 percent since December in the number of banks headquartered here um, and that takes away choices from consumers uh, from small businesses all over the state so do you think this would slow down that consolidation of all community banks to survive I think it could, but it could also allow a, a lower barrier to, barrier to entry for new banks to, to start. We've only had five new banks nationwide since 2010. Is it is there a middle ground here, right? I mean, I, 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 some people, I know, even that are supportive of it, think it goes too far the other direction. I mean, is there a middle ground? Is there, is, there, is there possible that there is too much regulation with that, Frank? So let me say a couple things. One is this consolidation trend was something that we've been paying attention to and we've heard about for years and well before the financial crisis. So this isn't something new. This actually started off with laws that were passed in the mid-90s that allowed some large banks to get even bigger uh, and swallow up market share. We've fully believed and we've said that if more community banks had been involved in the mortgage lending business pre-crisis, we probably would have been in a better place. The bill that's in play right now doesn't just deal with those small issues. It's a little like saying the starter on my car doesn't work, so I'm just going to blow up the whole car. And that's kind of what we're doing here. So if there was a reasonable conversation to be had about doing things that would alleviate the regulatory burden for some small banks while preserving many of the consumer protections, we might be able to have that. But that's not the conversation we're having, um, and that's not the conversation that a lot of folks are interested in having, and that is the real problem here. We should say, too, that all accounts of this bill will not get through the Senate the way it is, which is not unusual of the U.S. Congress as well. Right. What about, we, we keep hearing about this too big to fail and the problems that came after that. Uh, is there concern, though, that if we pull back as much as the Choice Act wants to, that it leads to more consolidation and they might become too big to fail again and we will repeat what happened? Well, one of my concerns about the post Dodd Frank era is that the larger banks have gotten larger. We've consolidated uh, financial assets, deposits, and, and loans into the larger banks for whatever dynamics uh, cause that. Um, and so, uh, so that concerns us. That should concern Americans. Um, the proposal is to create a, a bankruptcy path, uh, just a traditional bankruptcy path. Uh, and you know, many of us have flown on bankrupt airlines and we landed safely and our bags arrived on time. Uh, and so I think there's a, a, a way to find a resolution to the too big to fail issue. Whether this bill does it the correct way, I don't know. Without uh, government bailouts? W without government bailouts. We, we need to do away with government bailouts. This stuff's really complicated. I mean, I've spent a few hours this, just this morning trying to, it, it, it'll make your mind spin really quickly. What do you think this 
proposal and this issue means for Jane Doe sitting at home in their pocket? It means a ton. Because the centerpiece of the Dodd-Frank Act was the creation of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And that was landmark because it finally put consumer protection and financial services at the same footing as other regulatory issues and ensuring that banks were being profitable. And that wasn't something that was happening before. The, the, the things that led to the crisis were largely because consumer protection was an afterthought instead of a primary driver of what we should be doing in the regulatory sphere. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau has been extraordinarily effective um, and successful in doing what it was supposed to do. It has returned $12 billion of ill-gotten gains to over 28 million consumers who were victims of financial fraud or abusive conduct or, or conduct that violated the law. Um, if this law were to pass as is, the Finance Consumer Bureau would not be able to survive and it would not be able to do the work that it's doing. And there are millions of consumers who have been helped by the Bureau, not just from the enforcement actions, but also from the complaints they filed with the Bureau, which in turn has led financial providers to make things right. And those two things alone have had a huge impact. And if this act were to pass, that would all go away. Peter, specifically for you, this community of banks and why it's so important, what, what, what does that mean for, for, as I mentioned, Jane Doe sitting at home wondering what bank they should go to? Why are community banks so important? Great question. As Chris said earlier, if we'd had more community banks, traditional banks, involved in the mortgage business before the crisis, we might not have had as big of an issue. The problem is the mortgage lending business has gotten so complicated now as a result of some of the rules that have, that have come down since the passage of Dodd-Frank from the CFPB um, that many banks have gotten out of the mortgage business. Uh, we have fewer banks in the mortgage business than we did uh, 10 years ago. And so it, it's, there's less choice, there's less access, less competition, which is not good for Jane Doe and, and John Doe sitting at home. Also, uh, community banks make 43% of the small business loans nationwide, according to the FDIC. Small businesses create more than 50% of the jobs nationwide, so we need a strong community banking sector to support small business, to provide mortgages and basic services. So while the Financial Choice Act might not have been perfect, uh, we've got to find middle ground to find common sense regulatory relief that's consumer friendly. Uh, to, to relieve some of the burden. Well, we'll see what the Senate comes out with, and hopefully you two will come back and we'll talk about the impact of that bill and where we move forward from there. Good yeah. to see you, gentlemen. Thank you for making it a little easier to digest for the folks at home. That's it for tonight. Until next time, if it's on Jones Street or Main Street, you'll see it right here on Capitol tonight. In the meantime, have a great day.